Hey everybody, Matt Graham, MBS Live, here with you on Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. Bonds are doing better now. Started the day weaker, and that has reversed course. The first reversal happened at 9.30 a.m. when stocks fell at the NYSE Open, and we'll talk about that as it relates to bonds here in a second. But uh, the bigger move of the day has followed the 10-year Treasury auction, which was one of the scheduled events that had the potential to uh, impart a little bit of movement today. It ended up being much stronger than expected, much stronger than recent averages would suggest, and that reinforces the fact that bond demand isn't going anywhere quickly, even though it will see challenges in the short term from things like elevated supply, uh, both in terms of treasuries and other bonds that compete with treasuries. Speaking of supply, some of the MBS-related weakness is also supply-driven, as originator supply has been elevated recently, moving up over $7 billion a day in new supply. The Fed is only buying five. And yeah, there's much more supply than just new origination supply in the market. So it's not like the Fed needed to buy all of it anyway. But uh, $7 billion is more than the $5 billion it had been last week. And that's putting some pressure on MBS in as much as... MBS spreads versus treasuries are not quite as tight as they were last week. Mortgage rates are doing fine, however, and continue to tighten up versus MBS and thus versus treasuries. Uh, just not tightening up versus treasuries as much as they would if MBS were tighter versus treasuries, maybe. Uh, really, none of what I just said matters too much in the bigger picture. I think capacity constraints are as big of an issue as anything when it comes to rate spreads. Uh, Definitely uncertainty surrounding the forbearance situation is increasing margins, but uh, the pace at which margins can be tightened will depend just as much on capacity and uh, keeping the flow of business manageable because $7 billion a day of new origination is a lot. Anyway, we were weaker. The auction took us back into stronger territory, mostly a benefit for treasuries, as you can see here. But as you can also see, there was a little bit of a pause right around 105 to 110 p.m. And then things kicked into higher gear with the bond buying. Now we'll talk about that stock versus bond correlation on this chart from Icon. And we can see the blue line stocks, yellow line 10-year yields, that there's been a strong degree of correlation today and recently for that matter. If we scroll the chart back a little bit over the past two days, a lot of the ebbs and flows have followed one another in bonds. And uh, there was some news regarding sanctions against China around the same time that the rally in 10-year yields kicked into higher gear. But as we can see by scrolling this chart back, in the bigger picture, it's not a huge movement. What my eye is drawn to personally is the fact that 10-year yields seem to have uh, bounced in this 0.73 to 0.74 range a few times now, and maybe making a case for support there, which would be nice considering Really, the next line of defense was around 0.785 up here from early April. So if we're able to hold that as a ceiling, it would really reinforce the theme, the narrative that we think we see evidence for today in the strong auction stats. As far as how you play that from a lock float standpoint, uh, well, I'm still lock biased in general. Rates are, are low and uh, they haven't really moved up very much from long term lows a few days ago. So it's worth taking advantage of. There's nothing to say that we couldn't see a little bit more of a pushback in rates considering where origination volumes are uh, simply due to lender margins. That doesn't mean it's necessarily uh, crazy to float if you have a time frame to do that and clients that are inclined to do that and nice vanilla 30-year fixed conventional stuff. But just be aware that the wrong headline about progress or the right headline depending on your point of view of progress on coronavirus could really throw things out of whack and create a lot of volatility. Uh, in general, though, when we're talking about the spread versus mortgage rates and MBS or versus mortgage rates and the 10-year yield, uh, there is room to improve gradually there. And that would sort of be the justification that long-term floaters uh, would use to float. Not something I would suggest everybody go out and do, but also not something that's insane if you know how to manage the risks by keeping an eye on both your rate sheets and intraday MBS movement, which we can obviously help you with. That's going to do it for today. Back with you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.